Great construction champions. It's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the house down. Every Monday and Thursday, you get to tune in 8 a.m. Eastern, and we talk about being a construction champion. I know that's what you're here for. I know you're ready to rock and roll. I'm always ready to rock and roll, and we have another amazing guest here today with us. Nicole, it is great to have you on the podcast. I'm so excited to be here, and I love the energy, and it's always fun to have lots of energy right in the morning, get your day off to the right start. Absolutely. That's why I bring it. You know, you want it. You want to be, we're in the best industry you could possibly be in. We should possibly, we should just be fired up about that. So Nicole, why don't you tell all the champions out there a little bit about yourself? What got you here to today? Yeah, I I work in the construction world to help you uh, double and more your eight and nine figure B2B construction businesses because you guys rock. And um, I, you know, I just, I love the industry. I love how amazing, wholesome the people are. And I love what you're doing and how, you know, it's the backbone of every society is, you know, building it up and fixing it and renovating it. So um, I work with uh, these construction people to um, improve their businesses and work better with your clients. Awesome. I love it. And I'm like, I, like I said, I'm excited to dive into the conversation and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to ask you the million dollar question. And that is what makes a construction champion? Yeah. So I, I'm glad you sent it to me beforehand because, you know, it's always one of those things that what does make a champion, you know? And I realize most of the time, every, you know, these construction companies, you guys are amazing. But when you go out and tell people what you do, you say, I build buildings or, you know, we we're good and we're different because we, we have a good team of people, but that's, that's not you being a champion for yourself. So, you know, I get the amazing opportunity to sit down with my, my clients and their clients to find out really what sets you apart, what, What's your massive differentiator? Oh my goodness, the word is not coming out. Um, differentiator. There we go. Cool. Um, so that differentiator that really sets you apart, that makes people want to talk to you and come back to you and continue working with you. It's not because you build buildings or because you are good to your employees or you, you know, don't typically fall off ladders. You know, the things that I hear my clients say on what sets them apart is not really what sets you apart. It's the fact that you care or the fact that you spend time with your clients to make sure you know what they really want and deliver on that and you communicate and you find solutions that are to problems that no one knew was going to happen and you make it seamless and, you know, things like that. And the fact that each of your employees doesn't just, you don't care about them. You, you know, their dog's name, you know, their kids' names, you've put their kids through college. You know, you, you really care about your, your employees and your team and you care about the community. And you, you can point out every building you've worked on, every roof you've put up because you know, it's going to last and you're proud of that. And you, you take pride in it. Not your competitors don't always do these things. So really calling it out and saying, this is really what makes me a champion is what how I get to be a champion for my clients because I get to show off and help them show off what really sets them apart. So um, I mean, that's one thing, but that's that's such a huge thing that I see. I, I mean, I I haven't seen many of my clients do well or at all most of the time when you think of what makes you set you apart you're thinking about the features like you show up on time well gosh darn it you really should be showing up on time (laughs) or you know you uh have honesty well really you should be honest you know those aren't things that really you should be calling out those are expected those are the the baseline bare minimums what Mm. really sets you apart you know so that's I mean, we have a an interesting stigma in the 
construction industry of being scammers or, you know, no communication or all of a sudden you just don't show up. Well, yeah, maybe just say like, this is, you know, we don't, we don't accept that and we're better than that. And this is what we're known for. And you don't even have to talk about like, we're honest and we show up on time. Like we're there and we get the job done because we care about you. You know, it's just it's really highlighting what really sets you apart and makes you unique. I think that's what makes you a champion. I love it. And I, all I can imagine is that Facebook ad of the guy falling off the ladder that says, we promise our guys won't fall off the ladder. <laughs> you yeah. know what's happened. You know somebody has done that. But, you know, here on Construction Champions, we're all about moving the industry forward. And I love what you're talking about with that is that what should be the standard we use as – differentiators when that's not really how we're ever going to move the industry forward i believe contractors and builders in the construction industry should be used in the same terminology as lawyers and doctors and there's no reason why not other than we let the three percent or less of the bad eggs dictate the narrative around the entire industry mm -hmm. and then we end up marketing that we're not them when all, when we just should, like, we should just understand that, like that stuff exists and we should just go be better and not mm -hmm. let it be the baseline for what we do. Yeah. When, when you're saying, I don't do these things that tells your clients, like that puts that idea in their head and it makes them go, Oh, wait, why are they having to say that? Is that something that they actually do do? Or is it something that like everyone does, like, why are they saying it? And this other company over here is saying, like, we show up on time because we care and we do these things because we care. You know, I said show up on time, but, you know, when they're saying like, we get the job done on time or earlier, we keep inside your budget because we are on meticulous about how we manage these things. And then you're saying, Hey, we, we won't leave you high and dry. And you go, well, this other company sounds better because they're meticulous about these things. Whereas you could be even more meticulous and you could care more about your clients than that other company does, but they say it and your clients aren't going to know any different. So when you're out there saying, Hey, we, we're not going to leave you high and dry. We're not going to take off with your money. We're not going to, you know, um, show up and cause all these problems and leave you footing the bill for it. They're going to think, well, is this something they've done in the past? Is it something I need to worry about this company doing? Whereas this other company doesn't even mention it. So, you know, what do you want them to think about that you don't do these things or that you do these other amazing things? Yeah, I agree. Cause I, I'm a, I'm a component of like those questions. If the homeowner has them would naturally come up Yeah, and you can address them, but let them be the ones that bring up, Oh, well, my cousin's sister hired a contractor and they ran off with half their money. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry that that happened to them. We don't do that. That's not not part of what we do here at all. And you can get online, you can check out our reviews and see our reputation. That's just not something we do. And like you can address that stuff instead of being using it as the selling point you can utilize it to help close the job down on why you are the contractor and builder they should you do business with because they can that stuff can come in the form of an ejection during the sale mm -hmm. and you can just answer it because somebody else is probably using it as a selling point and then they're going to ask you about it and you yeah. can just confidently answer the question yeah when you can just confidently answer that question because it's not a problem. Like, of course we wouldn't do that. If you have it in all your marketing, it makes people nervous, even though you're trying to do the opposite. And it sounds, you know, counterintuitive because, you know, you're saying, hey, I don't do these things, but you have it everywhere. Why are you so focused on not taking my money? You know, like, <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you so focused on making sure I know that you're going to show up when you say you show up. Like, why are you so focused on this? You know, that that's not even my concern. I'm not worried about that, but now you've made it my concern. You know, if you have a lot of people in that, in the closing of the sale that are bringing things up, you know, mention it in your sales process, not in your marketing. Mm. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because like, if I'm, you know, let's go back to the guy falling off the ladder. Because I love it. Because I have seen, I, I think I have seen that as that, like an ad with that as that picture that said something like that. But like, so if I'm the customer, I'm going to see that and I'm going to be like, well, how many guys are falling off of ladders? Like, is this something that's happening? So then I'm going to be driving around. I'm going to see somebody working on a house. I'm going to wonder, like, how many people have fallen off those ladders there? Because now this is a problem that I didn't even know existed, that guys are just falling off ladders everywhere. <laughs> in this, Because this company's claim to fame is that they don't know, they guarantee nobody will fall off a ladder. So like you can start to you can start to create these these narratives in your customer's head mm -hmm. with your marketing. I had uh Matt Matt on here a long time ago and he said when you're advertising discounts your customers see you as a discounted product yeah. and service mm -hmm. because that's what you're advertising and we have to get out of that as a construction industry we have to move out of this ad like come and we'll give you a discount just for having us come out you're already discounting your services before you even show up and it's putting that narrative in your customers minds yeah if you want to you know if the, if you need a little incentive for them to call you do an add-on, something that is, they will per, they will perceive it as a much higher value than what you have to put on. Like, you know, maybe it's an upgrade, like sign up with us and we upgrade you to the next level. Whereas, you know, maybe that's a 20% increase for them in what it would have cost, but it's only a 5% increase for you. Um, but they see so much more value. Or if, and you know, it could be the amount of discount you would have said that you would do. Um, you could do, hey, we'll add on an extra shed or hey, you sign up with us and we've got this great partner that we'll bring over to help you with whatever, clean up afterwards. You know, we have this team that does this and we'll do this for you. And, you know, you can partner with this other company that they can sell your services as a package of yours and your services as a package of theirs. And you guys split some of those profits. You know, there's so many ways to do your marketing that doesn't make you a discount service. Because once you've said you're a discount service, people expect that. And then your profits just plummet because that 5% that you're giving away is your profit because you already have to pay for your your labor, your materials, your you know, all the time, investment, everything. That 5% is your profit. And we all want profit. So don't discount. <laughs> yeah, no, we absolutely all want profit. So I don't want I don't want you to have to give away all your your secrets and magic and secret sauce, but when you start working with some contractors and builders, what are like the the few things that you see immediately that are the, the quickest fixes that guys can just start to wrap their mind around right now? Yeah, that's a good question. So everything we do is custom. I've got a whole bag and it's kind of like Mary Poppins where you can keep putting your arm in there and lots of stuff <laughs> comes out. So um, I could talk for hours and still have plenty to that's still in that bag. Um, so I'm not going to give it all away. But, um, you know, one of the first things is really what your messaging is and who you're talking to. You know, uh, if you know your ideal client, and I'm going to stop right now and say your ideal client is not anyone who can pay on time. That is not it. And that is, I have to have that discussion with nearly every one of my clients. And I'm talking about $300 million construction companies, not $3 million companies. You know, we are talking about you know, $3 billion companies. It is not anyone who just can pay. Who are your ideal clients? If you could have more of that exact person, like think about all of the clients you've ever worked with. Who, it, like which jobs were the highest profit, most fun to work on, your guys, your, your team was happy working on it. You got paid on time. The profit was great. Think about that. Where can you find more of those? And what would that person, that company, that team that hired you, what would they be interested in working with you about? Like, what is it about you? What would you need to say to make more of those people interested? And where do you need to go to find more of those people that you can say the thing 
that would interest them. So if you can do that, that's going to get you going where you need to go. I mean, you, we want clients that pay, of course, but we want clients that we can get the profit. We can clients that are in our wheelhouse. And, you know, if we decide we're going to do a job outside of our wheelhouse and we have to pay a new expert to come in and help us and we have to get new materials, new, uh, new equipment, like that cuts into our profit. So focus on your area of genius, what you're good at, what your team enjoys doing and what pays well, what, what's good for you, where you can find lots of those and tell those people what they want to hear about what you do, not make up something, but what they really like about you. And mm -hmm. if you can get in front of them where they are with that message, you'll be head and shoulders above where you were just a little bit ago. Yeah, because we all know that job, like we have the jobs that went really, really well. The customer mm -hmm. was super happy. It was really good for the company. And we have the jobs that went really, really bad. That wasn't good for anybody. And it, you can start to look at the characteristics of those jobs of that client and start to have a better understanding of what work you do the best, as well as what kind of customers. Is it a commercial renovation or is it a home or is it a bathroom? Is it a kitchen? Is it a complete renovation? Am I, am I better building houses for people? You start to understand who is that person that you want to do more business with. And that, that to me is what marketing is about is yeah. getting in front of that person, not getting in front of everybody. And I think we look at it as trying to get in front of everybody when that's not necessarily what you need to do you need to get in front of your ideal customer yeah yeah we're not coca-cola here we're not trying to reach everyone and we're competing with pepsi and just trying to let everyone know you know no even though 15 billion dollar construction companies you know outside of the industry most people don't know who they are because they know who their target audience is so when you're targeting your ideal target audience with the message that resonates best with them and aligns with what you provide. And you know that you're going to give that amazing job and you're going to deliver on it. Everyone's happy. Everyone is happy and you get the profit you want and you get more clients. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's a flywheel that doesn't stop. And that's the thing about what we do is we don't sign up people for years and years and decades and decades because they have to keep working with us to make it happen. We get you going and get that flywheel started so that you can continue seeing success and more success. And it builds on it. Um, saying the wrong thing to the wrong people when they're not even looking for what you're doing is just a recipe to waste your money and be upset about marketing. So, you know, just focus on the right message to the right people and it'll all start coming together. Yeah, I think there's something magical about what you just said there when it comes to you have these big players that most people don't know about, mm -hmm. but you can guarantee their ideal customer know who they are. Yes. So like that is what everybody should be doing, like mm -hmm. focusing on that. Like it doesn't matter if everybody knows who you are. What matters mm -hmm. is if the people that actually can do, want to, and you would want to do business with, know mm -hmm. who you are. And that's where we should be focused. Yeah. Yeah. If, you're, if your target area is Little Rock, Kansas, sorry, Little Rock, Arkansas, where Kansas come in, um, uh, and that is your, your area, your um, geographic area that you focus on, you should make sure everyone who is your ideal client. So if you um, install plumbing in um, say multi-unit developments, every GC that does multi-unit construction should know who you are and you should be that number one go-to person. Every um, uh, investment Per, you know, real estate investment person should know who you are. You know, you shouldn't be known in, um, you know, Denver, Colorado for your construction. If you don't work in Denver, you know, if you only do commercial plumbing, you know, you don't need your residential people to know who you are, just in case maybe their sister's brother-in-law, half-sister may work in an office that has someone that is irrelevant. You know, it doesn't help you. 
focus on the people who need to know you in the area they need to know and what they need to know about you that resonates with what they care about. And that's, that's what you want. You don't need anyone else to know about you. And that could be a list of 30 people. And you spend a lot of time with that 30 people. And don't worry about anything else. I'm going to give you permission not to post on Facebook. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> don't worry about it. If it doesn't serve your client base, don't do it. You know, we had uh, Jason Von Payne on here. He's a roofer. Mm -hmm. And his whole first 24, he'll he'll do 15 million plus in roofs this year. And his whole first 24 months of being in business, he was like, I'm focusing on my zip code. Mm -hmm. Nowhere else. I'm not spending a dime on any marketing or doing anything outside of my zip code. Mm -hmm. So until I own this zip code, I'm not moving to the next. because. That's where my money's at to start. And that's where I can get that or start getting that organic growth to start to happen. So he poured everything into his zip code and just grew it and grew it from that. And I'm sure he's in the assisting zip codes, but he's like, I'm not. And he's like, here's where the things are going to happen. I'm not going to jump from my zip code to a zip code that doesn't connect. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm going all grow naturally into the zip codes around me. And he went out and got partners and people that work. So when, when stuff comes in, that's outside of his area. What's he doing? He's handing it off to somebody else that he trusts to go do that instead of him going outside of what he's committed to doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes like that building that partnership is the absolute best thing you can do. And If you have a crazy niche, like a zip code and they have a sister that's in a sec, you know, this zip code right next to it and you decide, Hey, I'm going to take that. It's okay too, because you're focused on your target market. You'll still take jobs outside of it if they align with your goals and what you're trying to achieve. But if you focus on one thing and take something wildly out of the area, like if you have to drive three miles out or sorry, three hours outside of your area, you're going to have to, it's going to cost so much more. That doesn't make sense. Bring a partner in. Mm -hmm. If it's next door, obviously it makes sense. Even if it's not your ideal target area. I hope that's clear too. No, that's clear. I think like you said, is every business is different, but you have to have these fundamental guidelines around your marketing and who you're marketing to and what that looks like. And if you don't have that, You're just really throwing a mass canvas out there that's not going to probably hit anybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Trying to get everyone means that you get no one. If you're trying to serve everyone, you will serve no one. So if you're really good at something, even if you're just a very good all around general handyman, that doesn't mean you're gonna build buildings. Someone that is really good at building buildings you know, you shouldn't go off and try and suddenly be the handyman, you know, like, what are you really good at? If it's high end, you know, um, track homes, if it's, you know, you know, residential plumbing, is it installs in um, commercial buildings? Like, what is it that you are really good at? Do that. And you target the people that want that with the message that I'm just beating a dead horse here, but the message that resonates with them and you target just those people with that message that resonates and you will do well. So I think I'm off that horse here at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I love it, but it makes sense. It's what guys have to start to understand. So Mm -hmm. I love it. It's been, it's been awesome having you on the show today And for all the construction champions out there, if they want to connect with you, follow you, learn more about what you do, maybe have a conversation with you, where's the best places for them to do that? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, but uh, I'm also just go to the website. It's glovermarketing.com and Glover, like you wear, like someone that works on gloves, you know, a Glover, (laughs) G-L-O-V-E-R, Glover, you know, Um, but glovermarketing.com and you'll find me and uh, you can set up a consultation call right there. You can look at what we do. 
Um, but that's, you can link to the LinkedIn link, um, go straight to LinkedIn. There we go. Um, any of that good stuff. Awesome. Well, Nicole, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. This was fun. <laughs> it's always fun. I have a blast. This is one of my favorite things I do now. So oh. all right, construction champions, another episode where we talked about marketing, but from a perspective of finding your ideal customer and having your messaging right. As I think back, I, I still, the latter thing, if you're the guy listening that has that, please send it to me because I know I have seen it where it's the, we don't let our guys fall off the ladders. And now you got a bunch of people out driving around thinking people are falling off their ladders. But <laughs> let, let's talk about how our marketing's going before we even start having that conversation with that customer. How much time, money, effort are you wasting on just throwing a, a huge canvas out there, hoping your ideal customer is going to see it? In today's word of the marketing, there's amazing things that can happen where if you know who you want to do business with, you can get directly in front of them. You don't have to just throw these large canvases out there and hope something hits. You can get in front of the right people all the time. So I want you to go look in the mirror and ask yourself that. Like, am I putting my best foot forward? And then not just are you putting your best foot forward, are you putting it forward to the right person? Mm -hmm. Like, think of this as dating, I guess, would be the best way. Like, are you, if you're going out and you want to meet somebody to have a relationship with, you're going to go to the right environment that has the right person. So if you don't drink, you're not going to go to the bar to meet somebody you want to be in a relationship with. Yep. And you're probably going to put the best version of yourself forward. Marketing your company is the same way because you're entering a relationship with your customers. So think about that. So construction champions, make sure you leave us a review. <laughs> you subscribe to our channel and you go check out all of our great sponsors that keep the show rocking and rolling. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Hey, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum here, and I want to talk to you about how you can automate all of your marketing. We've had so many people on here talk about getting the systems in place. Well, we have partnered with Build 12 and Construction Champions podcast, Les O'Hara, the founder. What really excites me is his 30 years in the industry. And now he's built a system to be able to nurture your leads and continue to utilize that. I personally use the system myself. Build 12 is absolutely amazing. There's a lot of value in there. And it's a way to start getting away from Angie's list and all of that kind of stuff and start actually creating your own leads every day and have a system for them. So go on our website Check out the show notes. Go check out Build 12 and what it can do for the front end of your business today. It's absolutely amazing. I highly recommend going and meeting with Les and his son, Devin, and talking to him about what they built for their own business so the rest of the industry can take benefit from that. Here on Construction Champions, we're all about helping each other out. And what is better than contractors helping contractors? I say nothing. So let's go take this to the next level. Go check out Build 12. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Les or his son, Devin. We're here to help. We want to continue to grow the industry.